Shoko Rimandere Bosi. So here's what we're going to do, brother. I'm going to go ahead and put this volume down. Guys, we're about to transition right into the podcast session. Let's get it going. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. Welcome to the Glory Podcast episode four, part two of Understanding the Prophetic. Man, last week we had a powerful time. Uh, Brother Ty, is it, what would you like me to call you? Brother Ty, Brother William? You can call me Ty. Ty, okay. Well, I'm going to call you Ty then. <laughs> so, cool. man, we had a powerful time uh, last week. We touched on a couple of topics. Just to recap, we talked about... Um, well, we just gave a, a we gave a, a clear um, we just kind of just wanted to clarify a difference between a prophet, between the gift of prophecy. Uh, we spoke yes. we spoke about uh, judgment prophecy and uh, yes. no judgment prophecy. We talked about um, how to how to process uh, the prophetic. Yes. Right. You talked yes. about yes. revelation. When you get a word from the Lord, you, it's a revelation. What you see interpretation yes. of uh, interpreting what you're you what you're seeing. Yes. Right. There you go. And then uh, application, how you apply yes. it. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, man. And then um, anything else that you want to recap from last week as we transition into this week? Man. Uh, yeah, man. Just uh, uh, what you just brought up. Revelation, interpretation and application. That's the body and the anatomy of a prophetic word. Revelation is what you receive. Interpretation is how you interpret what you see. Application is how you apply what you receive. And all of those have to be on point for the prophetic word to be 100 percent accurate. It is possible to receive the correct revelation and miss the interpretation. Uh, the prophet Agabus did that in the Bible, which you'll notice that we can talk about that a little bit tonight if you guys want to. Sure. But, um, um, you know, and that also touches on this. I must, you know, slip, you know, this part and then we can go uh, go on. In Deuteronomy, people often quote it and say where it says, um, if a prophet presumptuously speaks in my name, uh, you know, and it does not come to pass, you shall not, you know, fear him. Now, while that's true, that uh, you listen to what God said, he said presumptuous. If you go and look at that Hebrew word presumptuous, it means arrogant. Whenever you speak arrogantly, you're going to miss it. And that's the kind that God said that God, you know, uh, elected to punish. But whenever you get the revelation, but you miss the interpretation, which is possible, like the prophet Agabus did in the New Testament, which we could talk about that a little later if you want. Um, mm. You know, you notice the Bible still calls him a prophet. So, you know, I just want to throw that out there that you can not telling you to go and miss not telling you that you don't need to be fearful of it, but I'm saying that just because you miss an interpretation or so it doesn't mean that you're a false prophet. Just spend more time in the presence of God and he'll to continue to teach and train you how to learn what he's saying and understand. Amen, bro. That's that's good. That's good. So, yeah, we, we was actually uh, we were going to touch on presumption um, and 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 so that's good. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, but, yeah, so essentially what you're saying is like, hey. Like kind of like what I uh, I laid the foundation in part one was we see in part we know yes. in part uh, but when that which is perfect is come you know yes. we'll know all things right and so yes. what something that is needs to be very much cleared up in the body of Christ is just mm -hmm. because somebody misses let's say the interpretation doesn't mean mm -hmm. they're a false prophet right exactly. like exactly and so like you know because we're dude we're flawed right like we're yeah. <laughs> Agabus yep. Yep. like you said. He caught a yep. revelation, was accurate in the revelation, inaccurate yep. in the interpretation. Um, yep. But somehow, you know, and so he kind of missed it just a bit. And, and so uh, mm -hmm. definitely. And now on that note, because um, mm -hmm. I do want to talk about false prophets, false prophecy. But before we get into that, um, I want to talk about this conditional prophecy versus sovereign prophecy. I need I like to that. talk to you about that because we know. And, and, and I'll just lay a background for that as I ask the question. We know Jonah prophesied in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. Now, what yes. I, I try to go back to the book of Jonah and find, unless you repent, in his wording, he mm -hmm. did not say that. Uh -uh. So check mm -hmm. this out. So Jonah knew. Now, but So check this out. Jonah prophesied in 40 days, Nineveh will be overturned. Yep. And it says he prophesied what the spirit of God gave him to say. Yep. And but but then 40 days went by, Nineveh was not destroyed. 
And yep. now, based on most people in the church today, Nineveh will be labeled false prophet. Yes. But we know he's and not that, a false prophet because he's in the scriptures. Yeah, exactly. And so that's one of the reasons why he was embarrassed to go yeah, back. Yeah. Well, here's what's crazy, though. Here's what the Lord showed me. He said he prophesied 40 days in destruction, but he knew in his heart that I was going to show mercy. But it was not given to him to say that part. So, yeah, so, so, brother, I want to ask you this. So we know the Hezekiah example. I want to ask you this. What are your thoughts on conditional prophecy so versus sovereign prophecy? And how can we tell the difference? Go ahead. OK. Many personal prophecies are conditional. I'm not going to say every single one, but many personal prophecies are conditional. Um. Let me see where I want to go, because I could go a wide variety of ways with this. Jonah, for example, I'll, I'll build from what you said, and then I'll jump off of that. Yeah, go ahead. Jonah prophesied basically that Nineveh would see destruction. They repented. One reason, as you were uh, talking about why Jonah did not want them to repent was because he did not want to be looked at as a false prophet. He figured that if he would go back, you're a false prophet. They weren't destroyed. So now he was, you know, bitter about that. And God has a sense of humor because God grew up that tree. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that part. But anyways, staying on subject, um, conditional and unconditional. We also see another example of what you mentioned right there in Isaiah chapter 38. Um, in Isaiah 38, it says, in those days was Hezekiah sick under death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said, thus saith the Lord, set your house in order for thou shalt die and not live so isaiah did not say if you repent you'll live but he said if thou shall die and not live but what did hezekiah do he turned towards the wall prayed unto god and then after that the word of the lord came to isaiah saying go and say they uh i heard the prayer i seen the tears i'll add under you 15 years so just like with jonah isaiah gave a prophetic word who is obviously one of the biggest prophets in the Bible, has a whole book, like a huge yeah. book, yeah. gave a prophetic word and said, thus saith the Lord, you shall not live, you will die. Nothing else. So let's say Hezekiah prayed. And let's say Isaiah missed the next part of the word, or he didn't just so happen to put the next part on Facebook. He didn't put the next part of the word on Facebook, just yeah. told him personally, or just told somebody close to him. Next thing you know, Hezekiah didn't die. He's alive. So now you have Isaiah on his Facebook page. You know, like he went, okay, Hezekiah's going to die. You know, all of that. Now he's going to look at the comments. Oh, Hezekiah didn't die. You're a false prophet. You're a false prophet. Next thing you see, all these streams and all these podcasts are trying to <laughs> grab Isaiah on. It'd be like, Isaiah, did you prophesy that Hezekiah was going to die? But look at what, did you prophesy that Trump was going to win the election? <laughs> did you prophesy these things? But what Come people on. don't realize is that people can play a role in God shifting his mind and changing his mind. And with this, I uh, Hezekiah prayed and God shifted his mindset. And with the election, I put it in June. I said, the Lord showed because he showed me a vision and it's documented on my page. I said, uh, for some reason, I saw Joe Biden standing before an American flag with the wind of victory. Um, the Lord spoke to me. It, it was confusing me at first because I kept hearing, you know, uh, you know, saying, 100%, you know, Trump's going to win and all of that. But then God spoke that to me, and then I thought I was missing it. So I was like, Lord, he said, speak what I tell you to say. So I said it, and the Lord basically said, as it stands right now, Joe Biden's going to win. Unless the church does something, Joe Biden's going to win. Joe Biden won. And you know what I heard from many Christians? They said they didn't even vote this time because they figured God had it, which that irritates me because conditional there are words of condition. We see it in the Bible over and over and over again, just with these examples. Even with Abraham, God told yeah. Abraham to get up and leave his father's country. If Abraham didn't get up and leave, God would have raised up somebody else. King Saul is the greatest example of conditional prophecy, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, in the Old Testament. Why is this? Because God, first of all, he didn't even want to give them an earthly king, but the people Come wanted on. an earthly king, which first shows that God does not always get his desire. God doesn't always get his desire. 
prayer. It sounds good. It sounds religious to say, well, God always gets what he wants. No, he doesn't. He wanted to rule over them as king for the time being, but the people wanted Saul. He gave them Saul. God says he commands all men to repent, but all men ain't repenting. God doesn't get that. But as I keep going, King Saul ended up getting positioned into power. What happened? King Saul turned away from God. God promised King Saul that he would bless his descendants, that he That's would bless right, his household. But when King Saul turned away from God, guess what Samuel? Samuel came, basically told Saul that God changed his mind because you uh, disobeyed. God has left you. I'm raising up somebody in your place that's better than you. Oh, that has oh, to hurt. To hear God oh, say, I'm raising up somebody that's better than you. That's not your teacher telling you that. That's not your mm. mama telling you. That. That's God Almighty. So you can already imagine how Saul's pride was crushed. Very uh, prideful anyway, but it was crushed. Mm. He anointed David. David took all the promises that was to Saul. And God and eternity's past knew that, which is creeping in to the time travel aspect of the prophetic, because Jesus was prophesied to be of the Lion of Judah. So God already knew what was going to happen. He already knew that was going to happen. So he already designated Christ to come through the seed of David. But God had to continue to play out history as it was going. So that's why he anointed Saul anyways. For anybody that may ask, why did he put Saul anyways? Because history has to play out. It has to play out. So the, the conditional prophecy is Bible. Now, unconditional. Unconditional sovereign prophecy, in a mm -hmm. nutshell, are messianic prophecies. The first and the second comings of Christ, Bible prophecies. Those are going to be fulfilled no matter what. Every single prophecy prophecy about the first coming of Christ is to was fulfilled at his first coming born right. of a virgin line of the tribe of Judah um out of Egypt I call my son which by the way, I'm going to touch on that in a second. It gives very, a very sound word and prophetic uh, wisdom. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Cool. But the Bible prophecy, future prophecy about the Lord's second return and everything that surrounds it, wars, rumors of wars, um, you know, uh, um, you got pestilences, earthquakes, famines, uh, winter storms, which it says that in the Syriac translation. You have all of these. The book of Revelation is non-conditional. It's sovereign. It's The non-conditional is that everybody will die except those that's caught up in the rapture. And the, these are the non-conditional prophecy, so, prophecies. So the difference in it is who it is addressed to and what it is speaking about. If it's a prophetic word about Jesus, non-conditional. If it's a personal prophecy, more than likely, then it's conditional. Yeah, bro, that is fire, man. That is Glory fire. Look, Kayla said, I got Holy Spirit chills all over me. Come on, the word of God never Praise fails. God. It and Glory so, God. bro, that is so good because they, you know that, like bro, like you said, there's podcasts. Be <laughs> like right now, bro, we're, we're like people are tripping so hard about the prophets that prophesied Trump that, yep. like you said, bro, there's literally series. There's podcasts yes. dedicated to addressing yes. this confusion when it's so yes. simple. It is so it is. simple. And it's the reality that people are saying this. And here's, here's the problem, right? You got, and, and, and I don't want to, I'm not targeting anyone specific. I'm not bashing anyone for how they re responded to this situation. So don't hear me putting down every, any other minister or any other prophetic voice. That's not what we're doing. That's not the intention of this podcast. But hear me here. There, there's, uh, how do I put it? So there's this situation, and, and I kind of want to touch on this a little since we're already on the topic. There's this situation where people are apologizing, saying, hey, uh, you know, I said Trump was going to win. I missed it. Um, you know, <laughs> I want, so I guess without giving too much of, uh, so, so here's what I want to say. Like, if the body of Christ was mature, and understood how the prophetic work, they wouldn't be harassing the prophets today. Exactly. So I don't know, you know, so I don't know if I fully agree with the apologizing, right? I understand the heart behind it. I understand that they're trying to uh, not damage the body of Christ because of so many put their hope on a word. And which, by the way, don't ever throw your heart on a prophetic word. 
you throw your heart on Jesus. Okay. Amen. So as we talk about the prophetic tonight, don't idolize the gifts of God. You worship God who is the giver of the gifts. Amen. And yes. so when yes. we're talking about what we're talking about, we want you to earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. Like we, like Paul says, but we don't want you to put it on a pedestal and worship it. Like much of the church did today, which I yes. think partly plays a role that in does. the Trump prophecy. I think God that the Lord, that. because many people were making Trump an idol. And, and I know yep. people don't like when, I, when when you start saying that. But the reality no, is right. many people idolized a man and yep. wanted a political Messiah yes. rather than the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And yes. it's the same error made at the time of the first yep. coming. People wanted Jesus yep. to deliver them from the, the, the oppression of Rome. Jesus said, no, nope, mm -hmm. I'm coming to deliver you from sin and from the devil. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my kingdom is not of this world. OK, so. Just to just to lay that down for you guys, okay? Like th this is one of the issues that that is going on, and why the condition? Because I prophesied, the Lord spoke to me. He told me that Trump was his desire for this nation. Yes, yes. God yes. spoke to me that he wanted that four more years of Donald Trump would mean four more years of legislative grace over our nation to give yep. the church time to prepare financially, spiritually, and mentally for the coming. Uh, judgment yep. Yep. <laughs> and so yep. and, and so that's what the lord told me but i he told me it was conditional see like yes. He, yes. he told me he said this has everything to do with how the church responds how the yes. what the motives of the church are what, how, because the reality is, is like you like we were just talking about people were idolizing the guy yep yep, yep. And, and, and 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 again i'm not talking about those who genuinely wanted him to be in place to no, end I'm abortion yeah. to end some of the issues but there i'm saying that yeah. yeah. But again, so anyways, God is purifying the prophetic. Uh, I like what somebody just said that in the chat. The prophetic is being purified. I totally believe that. Amen. But I think that the uh, my my perspective on it, just to give a little bit of me on this, is it, it doesn't have to look like what we're seeing right now. Because a lot of the people, and I'm not t targeting anyone specifically, a lot of it, man, it's it's... It's just them trying to clean up their 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 their, their audience. They're trying to uh, pander to people because they don't want to tell people that prophecy is conditional. Yeah, man, I'm I'm praying for them, man. It's yeah. Uh, so, what are your thoughts them. on that, man? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think you know, and this is just you know my opinion on the matter. Anytime you miss an interpretation or, you know, just miss any form of prophecy, I do believe an apology is in order, but I also believe that there should be a teaching behind it, not saying anybody's not doing it because they could be and I don't see it, but I'm just speaking in general um, because this is what I try to do myself. I try to use old prophetic words that I'll give and use that as teaching points to help others. So what I, uh, you know, believe, you know, in line with the apology would be to teach people about conditional prophecy and how it's possible to miss a prophetic word if you yes. miss the interpretation, because you can, because I believe 100% because the Holy Spirit told me too, Trump was his desire. And I stand on this to this day. I'll stand before God in judgment day and testify, God, this is what I believe I heard you say. I'm that confident. And be, I'm that confident um, because not simply because it's just I was in the dark and that's a voice that I heard. No, because of the signs that accompany, co accompany me. If you some of you may have been on my Facebook page. I talked about this last week. Uh, the Lord showed me a sign of the sword in, above America uh, in, in 2016 that happened in 2017. That next year during the eclipse, it happened exactly as he said it would. The sword above uh, America, the plane went through the eclipse causing that sign. The next one was a, um, mm. was a, um, the red sign of the Red Sea that would be seen in 2017. Uh, the Lord said he was going to show the sign of the Red Sea. The water was pulled back completely. So, and people were literally able to walk on dry land. I think it was down in Tampa from Hurricane Irma. And yeah. these things, in the same way that God spoke that to me, is the same way that he said Trump was his desire, um, you know, completely. And he gave me the full-scale prophetic word, you know, for it said that there would be election fraud, but, you know, um, Oh, my gosh, I don't even want to get into that because God is angry. Um, and, you know, before somebody says, why doesn't God just do anything about it? <laughs> you know, if God were to just step up, and do something about it, all of America would be destroyed right now because his it. wrath, his wrath. Oh, my gosh, his wrath would have to pinpoint every single person that was involved. And a lot of people would drop dead. And 
that's a whole nother subject. But ultimately, uh, even this, God allowed it to happen because everything works together in God's good and his will, his divine will. Yeah, because sure. there were a lot of people, and a lot of people accused me of idolizing Trump, which I told him plainly. I'm the same person when Obama was in office. I'm the same person Trump's in office. I'm the same person now that Biden is in office. Literally, because I don't put my hope on a person. I put my hope in God, and because my hope is in God, I respect the tool that he uses. On, and Trump good, just bro. so happens to be the tool that he desired to use. So I can't say that I love God and disrespect his hand on who his hand is on. That's impossible. If That's I solid. genuinely love God's ways, I'm going to respect the tool that he uses. And before people say, well, Biden's a man of God. This is not to get political, and I'm not pushing to be political because, oh, no. yeah, yeah. In the Bible, you read First Kings, you read Second Kings, you read the entire Bible. God dealt with real world leaders. Daniel says God raises up kings and brings them down. And before somebody says, "Well, doesn't that mean God brought up Biden? Then God's approvals on Biden." He brought him up, but not necessarily his approval. Why is this? God raised up Hitler. God raised up Joseph Stalin. God raised up Yamamoto, who helped bomb Pearl Harbor. God raises up men according to a purpose, but it doesn't necessarily mean he st his stamp of joy and approval is on that. He raises up the Antichrist in the future, and he's going to kill him directly. So just because God raises up somebody, it's to work with his purpose, but it doesn't necessarily mean that God loves that person's ways. Come One on, way bro. you can tell that God is about to judge a nation, and I'm sorry going off on a rabbit trail. No, this is perfect, bro. To... Yeah, go ahead. Glory this is God. good. People need to hear this. Keep going. Glory to God. One major way that you know that God is about to judge a nation, and he is, if you study, he gives them wicked leaders. Why? Because wicked leaders, they then legislate, legislate stuff that is against his word. And then when they do stuff that is against his word, they take him out of it. When they take him out of it, his hand comes off. When his hand comes off, everything comes in. So God is allowing them to put in the Equality Act. He's allowing this, not because he personally loves it, but he's allowing it because this is what people in America and the church let happen. So he's pulling his hand off. And I'm telling you, the, America is going to witness things worse than COVID. You think COVID was bad. If you could not sit it, I see, oh, this irritates me. I see on, so many brother. Christians say, well, you know, in the tribulation, I'm going to be able to withstand the mark of the beast and all of that. You can't even fast and pray now. How are you not going to be able to eat by that time then? You can't even fast and pray now for 10 days. And look, at, at that point in time, even you can't even stay in your house in a quarantine for a while. What are you going to do? Uh, you know, and, and I personally believe in a pre-trib rapture, but this is, you know, just generally speaking. What are you going to do if you're being persecuted by the Antichrist and you have to live under a rock? For 20 days. You can't even you can't even stay in your home comfortably watching TV during the quarantine. And, but yet you you think that you're gonna be able to withstand the persecution in the future. It's not happening. You need to get right with God for real. For bro. real. I didn't got off a little tan. No, 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 dude. That is so, solid. Bro. That is solid. And here's oh what I God. tell people, because I did want to ask you about how eschatology plays into <laughs> prophetic interpretation. Ooh. Ooh, yes. But, but let me get into that in a minute. Sorry, my camera keeps going in and out. Oh, One good, second, guys. Uh, you're good. Sorry. This is uh all right. Let me just oh, do this. Good, yeah, you're good, brother. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna do that because sometimes my other camera kicks in and out. So I did want to touch on that question, but before I do so, I want to touch on what you just said, bro. Sometimes, Absolutely. how do you know that God's about to judge a nation? He brings up wicked kings. Dude, that is all over the scriptures. And number two, yes. for those of you who are saying, oh, I don't like when uh, preachers or, or prof prophets get into politics. That's an error. Wrong. All over the Bible, prophets addressed political figures. Like, are you kidding yes. me? Like, that's... I, with kings. If you've... Ne like, anyone who says... Prophets shouldn't prophesy about politics. You've not read your Old Testament at all. Like you have not read your Bible. Uh, but I want to say this because my wife was praying. My Bro, my wife saw the situation with Joe Biden before it happened. My wife had dreams. I mean, my, my wife wow. had in, insane. Like my shout out to my beautiful wife. She's so prophetic. <laughs> but bro, she's a dream and vision woman. She she gets all these crazy uh, nationwide words from the Lord. Um, oh, my God. And so she was asking the Lord, she was actually praying to God 
uh, just to stay on this subject for just a little longer. Uh, she was praying to the Lord and she said, how long, God, how long, like, when? Are, why don't you just tear these people down? Why can't you just, you know, bring destruction to these wicked yeah, people? And, yeah. and, you know, she was crying out like this. And then she said, yeah. and she was asking God for an answer. And she felt like God told her to go to the book of Habakkuk. Mm, come on. And, and she said, Habakkuk? I'm not going to find nothing yes. in there that gives me an answer to what I'm saying. <laughs> Bro, yes. she opens to Habakkuk chapter one. Uh -huh. And look at what it says. Oh, Lord, how long shall go. I cry? And you will not hear. Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Listen to this. Therefore, the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. Does that not sound like America? Sounds for the, like it. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, preserve judgment. Per, uh, th therefore, per perverse judgment proceeds. And then the Lord replies. And he says, look among the nations and watch and be utterly astounded for I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe though. I, though it were told you for indeed, I am raising up the Chaldeans, AKA the Babylonians. Yes. It says, I'm going to rate, listen to this. He's saying, why don't you bring justice? Why don't you, why don't you do what's right? Why can't you just do this God? And God says, I'm about to raise up the Babylonians. What? That's worst. <laughs> yes, yes. And he said, a bitter and hasty nation which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity proceeds from themselves. Their horses also swifter than leopards and more fierce to evening. With so, in, in other words, he's saying, I'm about to bring judgment on Israel. I'm about to raise up a nation to come and destroy Israel as a judgment to them for their wicked actions. And so listen, man, like what? Listen, God, I believe there was a window of grace made open and available. I think. I think that I don't know. I'm not going to speak on it. I don't know if there's still an opportunity for our name. I believe revival's coming. But what I've always said is revival always comes with trials tribulation, persecution, judgment in many cases, right? Right before Azusa broke out, there was an earthquake that shook San Francisco. It was one of the worst, worst earthquakes in the history of America. Mm. Mm. Right before the, this was a shaking right before the revival. Guys, many times, this is where the, balance, the imbalance has been in much of the prophetic movement about revival. We want revival without the trouble. Yep. And it does not work that way. Revival that always way. comes alongside of judgment, persecution, trials and tribulations. And so we're going to see revival, but we're also going to have a hell of a hard time in yes. the world. But Jesus yes. said, do not be afraid. Do not be troubled for I have overcome the world. And yes. guys, what God is doing is he, listen, I mean, it's seldom and rare when the church awakens at times of comfort. It doesn't happen as often. But there's, uh -huh. but m what you see in history is that the church always awakens at times yes. of crisis. And I believe yes. that we're going to see a great awakening, a great revival, but it does not mean that it's going to be without the trouble. Amen. Yep, right and so, man, uh, Okay, next topic, because <laughs> we could talk on that all night. Yeah, we're um, good. Yeah. Um, so, bro, so tell, so let's talk about that real quick because I think um, to be transparent with you, um, me and you kind of share a little bit of a difference on an eschatological perspective. I somewhat, here's how I view it: I'm re I, I'm preparing myself for the tribulation. But I sure won't be mad if I get pre a tribulation raptured. <laughs> Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got and you, so, man. And so how do you so but there's another thing, right? There's another eschatological yeah. view. And I don't want to touch yeah. on eschatology too much because I want to get into how to, you know, some of the prophetic stuff and how to yeah. walk in it. But how do you think esch your eschatology plays into your interpretation of prophecy? Um, it plays a major role. I can only speak for myself when um 
Gee, and, I, and I'm going to give some scriptures and I'm going to tell you something that the Lord told me overall to tell the body of Christ, um, because God is sovereign and he's great in mercy. But when I got saved, he said, tell my people I'm coming. So, you know, that that was the that was the words that drew me into Christ, not from a minister, pastor, no man. I was in witchcraft, fresh out of witchcraft. Tell my people I'm coming. And because he said, tell my people I'm coming. The Lord uh, told me at that point in time. And he was letting me know that he ordained me to be a prophet of, you know, the, you know, days of the end, you know, when the announce is coming. And, you know, eschatology belief wise, biblically speaking, um, I do believe that there is a rapture. I do believe that there is a rapture. First Thessalonians sure. chapter 4, 16 to 18. The argument comes in to where, you know, when it will occur. And the reason why I personally believe it will, and I know that, you know, it could be different, but this is, you know, just my view. Um, in one of Paul's letters to the church of Thessalonica, he makes mention uh, that the church, God's people were not appointed to wrath. And the first part of the tribulation, according to Revelation chapter 6, I think it's 616. Don't quote me on that. I got to go back and look. But it's a Revelation chapter 6. It notes the seal judgments as the wrath of the Lamb. And then when you get to the end of the tribulation, it notes that the vile um, or the, is the wrath of the Father. And Jesus makes mention in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, for those that have kept my command to persevere, I'll keep you from the hour of trial or the tribulation, which will come to test those who dwell on the earth. And after that, he says, to, he says, I'm, I'm coming soon. Uh, let no man take your crown, uh, which gets into, you know, the whole uh, judgment day setting and the beam of judgment and all of that. But I was praying. I was like, Lord, um, you know, there's so much confusion in the body of Christ of, you know, when your return is. And, you know, I don't want basically you know, uh, us as brothers and sisters to be divided over the time, but just be ready. The Lord said, he told me this, not in these exact words, I'm paraphrase, paraphrasing. He said that it's okay for us to talk about and discuss, you know, what we believe and stuff, because, you know, it's okay. But he told me specifically, tell people don't get so caught up in the time as in they idolize it. Because when they idolize it, they put their um, they, they put their mindset on a doctrine and they worship a doctrine. Doctrine is supposed to point us closer to Jesus, not it, not, not, and not make us feel right in ourselves. Right. Even though one of those is right. The Lord said specifically, tell my people just to look for my coming. Tell them just Come to on. look for my return. Tell them just to look, just to look, because when he comes, mm -hmm. this is the key. If he's looking, I believe in pre-trib and you know, you believe in post or mid. I'm in between the two. In between the two? Okay, okay. I'm gonna That's what I'm saying. I, so I, I hold on to it loosely because of the same yeah. thing. The Lord said the same thing to me. Got you. Okay. I'm going to give yeah. you a little nugget just to look up. So when you get a chance, when we get off, study Revelation chapter 11 and link with 1 Corinthians 3, the Bema judgment seat of Christ and all of that. And that'll, you know, uh, help you with the timing a little bit. But cool. ultimately, the Lord said, you know, okay, it's okay to discuss. Because, you know, as believers, iron sharp sharpens iron. But don't make it an idol. Don't make the doctrine an idol to get you your focus off of me. He said to tell my people I'm coming and just focus on his coming. Because you are given a crown, all of us, for those that love his appearing. I forgot the name of the crown, but it's one of the crowns. So mm -hmm. I'm here to tell everybody watching this. You know, it's okay to discuss pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, but just yeah. be ready for his return. Look for yeah. his return. Just look for his return. Because when you look for his return and you have an active relationship with him and you persevere, you're going with him. Yeah. So that's what, you know, is good to uh, focus on. And to answer another part of the question, then we continue. Sure. Um, for me... I know the Lord, and I'm going to uh, give y'all a prophetic word that I was given. The Lord, he speaks to me in a lot of, he's, when I started out, he gave me a lot of personal prophetic words for people. Then he gave me a lot of national. Now he gives me both personal and national. One word he gave me, this is dated. This is on my Facebook. People saw it. Yeah, that's this good, is on, Jenny. Amen. I, yes, yes. I wanted to say that too. I wanted to just say like, either way, we're yeah. never called to be passive, whether it's pre, exactly. post, or mid. We are to exactly. occupy till he comes, preach the gospel, yes. and and live live as the Lord commands us to daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, uh, and and 
like you said, bro. So yeah, <laughs> occupy till he comes, you know. But go ahead, keep going. Yes. Just, just wanted live to touch like that he note. Could come tomorrow. <laughs> live like he could come tomorrow, but prepare as if it's another hundred years, you know, in what you do. And this is a prophetic word that I was given October 13th of 2017. I won't read all of it because it is a long word, but I'll focus on this part. Um, This was documented and dated on Facebook. And some of you may have seen it if you're on my friends list. Tell my people to do what I have assigned them to do and do it quickly. The listen to this next part, because when God speaks, people think that it's metaphorical, a lot, which sometimes it is, but every single time it's not metaphorical. Listen, Mm. Tell my people to do what I have have assigned them to do and do it quickly. These are the days of acceleration when I'll bring the earth into a dimension to merge with her destiny. Behold, watch the signs that I will bring in the time ahead. I will continue to show wild signs in the heavens and in the earth that will even baffle your scientists. So listen to that part. He said these are the days of acceleration. He will bring the earth into a dimension to merge with her destiny. Listen to that part and the other parts. In 2021, this news, this was in 2017. In 2021, this news article dropped. The year 2021 is set to fly by as the earth is spinning faster than it has any time in the past 50 years, prompting scientists to call for the addition of a negative leap second. But since mid-2020, the earth's spin is accelerated, they use the word accelerated, and is now on average 0.5 milliseconds a day shorter than 24 hours. The prophetic (laughs) word said, these are the days of acceleration when I'll bring the earth into a dimension to merge with her destiny. Behold, why? Watch the signs that I'll bring in the time ahead. I will continue to show wild signs in the heavens and the earth that will baffle your scientists. Scientists found this out. God spoke this in 2017. They found it out in 2020. And what else Bro. happened prophetically in 2020? Oh, yeah, COVID. Um, the peach treaty that was signed to lay the foundation. So much stuff. So I say that to um, say this, not yelling at you guys. But I, I just got excited. I say this to say this. Um, We are in the time of the end. I couldn't have known that off of human knowledge. I couldn't have guessed that. I have a better chance at guessing uh, three, uh, four numbers in the lottery than I have guessing this. Because this is something that deals with the earth, the earth, the earth at a physical level, the earth's body. I cannot cause the earth's body to accelerate. God said he would, and God did it. This is not me speaking. This is not me. I don't want people to glorify me. This is him. This is him. He did it. This had to be somebody that's over earth because I don't control earth. This has to be somebody that's over earth to fulfill this. And this was, and here's all of this. There's a lot more to this prophetic word. That was only like one fifth of the prophetic word, but there's a lot more to it. Or no, like one eighth of it. But this was to act as a sign. Mm. This was a sign. This wasn't just the fulfillment of all the prophecy. God said this was a sign. I'll show wild signs. This was a sign. And the reason this is a sign pointing to the days that we're in, because we are in the days where he's accelerating the earth to fulfill and merge with her destiny of prophecy, which that'll lean into the time travel aspect of, you know, what I'm going to touch on before I get off. So I'm going to stop right there. No, man, dude, we can just go so deep on that, bro. Uh, yeah. So good. I believe we are in the end, the end time. And, yes. and, and that's why, man, we got to be made ready. Like you said, bro, whether it's pre-trib, post-trib, uh, mm-hmm. look, live is live to be ready for all of it. Like, yes. be ready. Be yes. ready for post-trib. Are you ready to yes. die for Christ? Are you ready to be beheaded to not take the mark? Are you ready for the persecution? Like, because, you know, in America, are we really going to escape persecution before the coming of Christ? Like, when America, the rest of the world is dying? <laughs> America ain't escaping no form of persecution. We about to get it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we got to be ready. And guess what? The darker Amen. the days, the greater the glory. Period. Yes. On the church. Yes. We're going to see more miracle signs and wonders. There's going to be a greater demand for the kingdom of God. And uh, shake up. We're going to see a greater demand for the power. From, from Because you see, the this is what the Lord told me on a side note. The Lord told me the kingdom of God operates from supply and demand. The greater the yes. demand, the greater the supply of power. And so the yes. greater the need, kind of like, let's say we do go through the mark of the beast days, right? 
you're going to need food, but God's not, but God's not going to tell you to take the mark. He made it very clear that there's a condemnation for that in Revelation 14. So what are you going to do? Well, I believe if we do live in those days, it'll be just like Moses. We'll get manna falling from heaven. <laughs> Y'all are supernaturally and, and, blessed people. Oh, yeah. Because there I are mean, Christians that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are Christians that's mentioned that's here. You know, and I believe, you know, in my belief, I believe that they're new, newly converted Christians. But just overall, just overall, let's say that, you know, it is post-trib and that's, you know, whatever. Um, those Christians are supernaturally kept you know, during that time, and the Jews are supernaturally kept. God's people are supernaturally kept, those that follow him. And who? Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. That's why, that's why I say, like, man, are we ready for that? Because I actually met a brother just, I'm so sorry, I keep touching on this subject. <laughs> I met a brother who's living, the Lord spoke to him. Uh, I believe he's a prophet of the Lord as well. The Lord spoke to him and said, told them to give up everything and live on the street and travel around America on foot mm. in a tent. And he's been doing that for five years. And the, and, and we actually had him stay with us for two weeks. Uh, Lord, powerful man of God, bro. He began Praise. to share because this was during a time when the Lord was speaking of this to me too. This was actually when the shutdown happened. Um, yeah. Brother, if you don't mind, I think the volume on your side is a little too loud. So it's picking up an it's, echo on me. Hold on. Give me one second. Yeah, you're good, bro. Because I'm getting like an All echo. Right. How is it now? Let me see. Echo. Oh, we're good. <laughs> good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, man. So anyways, this guy stayed with us, man. Uh, we had him stay with us for two weeks. Powerful man of God. He's willfully gave up everything to live on the streets. Like, just willfully. He doesn't have to. He's a very clean cut dude. Looks very sane. You know, like, he wasn't like a cuckoo, like a crazy guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he told the stories of how God would, when he would, he was in uh, Arizona, walking and Arizona is a lot of desert and the nearest gas station was 25 miles away walking and it was late and he had seen a dried up stream and he had ran out of water and he said God please like let me get water at least for 15 I minutes love where this is going he, bro he said God please let me at least get water for 15 minutes he had a little water filter uh to fill his gallon he said just so I can fill my gallon Lord bro can you believe the water began to bubble up off of the ground and begin to flow for 15 minutes for him I to filter it. out the water and have a full That's gallon of water. You, serve. you see what I'm saying? Like, bro, super natural. Like, we have to understand. And many people are like, well, I've never seen anything like that. The reality is, is you haven't had the demand for it. Exactly. It's when there's a demand, God supplies Right. Exactly. And, and so that's why we should not fear at the days of head. We should not fear with the things that are coming, because the greater the need, the greater the supply of his kingdom. Yes. And so anyway, yes. that's enough on that subject, because <laughs> we can talk. That's we can true. do a whole video on that. You subject. Can do a whole, yes, on the head. <laughs> so here's I want to talk about this real quick, because I promised CC, if you're still watching, uh, I promised you that we would get to this question. Let's talk about time travel okay uh let's start out with uh or maybe let's I'll, I'll let you start out how you want to but the the question she had for me was can you explain deja vu because she's had a couple of supernatural experiences lately uh with quote deja vu obviously that's the worldly term for it um mm -hmm. talk to us about that bro i know you have a whole chapter in your book about it i got a whole chapter okay I could start from a lot of places. Oh, I could really start from a lot of places. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you points. And if you guys have the book, check out this chapter in the book because you will love it. If I gave all the points that's in the chapter of the book, this will go on for another four or five hours. Or so, And mm. I mean that literally. So I'm going to give points. Deja vu. If you notice in the Bible, and I'm going to give points, Oh, I feel the presence of God on this. Okay. Mm. In the Bible, I want you to notice something. Mm. Before, or let me ask you guys, when was the lamb slain? When was the lamb slain? Before the foundation. Come on. Before the foundation of the earth. Mm. But wasn't he crucified, though, during the earth? How was he slain before the foundation of the earth? 
When you understand that, you'll understand how God moves. You mm. see, the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth. That means that before God created the earth, everything was already finished. The Lord, the lamb was already slain. And this could go multiple perspectives, but this perspective, we're going to talk on this perspective of time travel and deja vu. The lamb was already slain. And inside of God, everything already happened. You were already in heaven. I was already in heaven. We were already rejoicing because we we're already up there. Can I prove it with scripture? If you go in Isaiah chapter 53, you're going to read, and it said he was wounded for our transgress transgressions. It says he was, uh, let me go to it. Let me go to, because it's, it's some words that I want to key in on, some key sure. words that I want to key in on, Come on in Isaiah 53. And if you have a Bible, you can flip there. Yeah. Okay. Right here. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. When with his wounds we are healed. But this is an Isaiah. It didn't happen yet. How was it past tense? How was it past tense already? It hasn't happened yet. Well, then we go to Psalm 22. Go to Psalm 22 if you have a Bible. Yeah, that's good. Though. In Psalm 22, what do we read? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry the daytime, but they, you, uh, thou hearest not. But in the night season, I am not silent. And then he goes on to talk about he is a worm, no man a reproach of man, despised by people. All they that see me laugh at me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake my head saying he trusted in the Lord that they would deliver him. You go and read these and you read this. This is a messianic prophecy, because if you remember when Jesus was on the cross, what did he say? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is Old Testament. So how is it? I'm building the foundation to answer the question. Old Testament, before the foundation, the lamb was slain. Old Testament, he was wounded, past tense, for our transgressions. And it talks about him being purist as well, past tense. You go to Psalm 22, it's speaking in, in, it's in the past. It hasn't happened yet. King David's prophesying in a sense of what Jesus is going to say on the cross. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of who? Jesus. So that's what they're operating under, the spirit of prophecy. Interesting, right? Powerful. And powerful. that brings me to this next step. <sighs> Which way could I go with this, God? When you go to the book of Revelation, fast forward, the book of Revelation, I, it'll be too much to include Daniel, so I'm going to go to the book of Revelation. What do you see? John is transitioned into the future. Now, I want you to think about this. John isn't in present heaven. When he had that vision, he was not in present heaven. He was in future heaven. With the future tribulation, the future New Jerusalem, the future saints of God that were not born in his day and age, but they were already dead and raptured and resurrected in that time period in the future. Mm. Let that boggle your mind a little bit. Yeah. He said he every nation, every traveled. tribe and tongue. Yeah. Yes. He was time traveled into the future. Now I'm building a foundation. So when John was in the future, he probably saw you. You weren't born in his day though. He probably saw me. John saw people in the future that did not exist yet. So this begs the question, since that place exists in God, is there a future us right now that exists in God? God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God wasn't being poetic. He literally knew Jeremiah because he dwelt with Jeremiah in the future already. Oof. He dwelt with him in the future already. So he knew Jeremiah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> and I'm, 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 I got to pull up something from the book real quick, because as I'm building this foundation, this is important to know if I could find it real quick. 
Wow. You have, have you guys um, ever heard of Albert Einstein? <laughs> bro, you're blowing us away, bro. <laughs> go ahead. Glory keep going. to God, man. <laughs> Albert Einstein said um, that, where is it? In his theory of special relativity, determined that the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers. And I'm going to uh, translate this. He goes on to say that, um, this, I'm trying not to jump. He goes on to say that he found that space and time were interwoven into a singular continuum known as space-time. Events that occur at the same time for one observer could occur at different times for another. This is what he scientifically noted. Mm. And I'm going to repeat that again. Events that occur at the same time for one person or one observer can occur at different times for another. And this is based off the belief that time does not pass at the same speed for everybody. When you go and look, it says that um, the increase of, and I'm going to translate this in a second into English, the increase in mass is the reason that Einstein says matter cannot travel faster than light. The mass increases with velocity until mass becomes infinite when it reaches the light speed. An infinite mass would require infinite in energy to move. So this is impossible. So let me break that down. Albert Einstein said in order to be, be able to time travel that you have to have infinite amount of energy, infinite amount of mass, and you would have to travel at the speed of light. Can somebody name a being that can do that? Can somebody name a being that is infinite in power? Can somebody name a being that is infinite in energy? Can somebody name a being that is infinite in time who is not just trying to travel at the speed of light, but is light himself? God. Albert Einstein's observation of what it would take to travel through time basically tells God's uh, make up from a scientific perspective which shows how he's able to do this but I had to use that as a foundation too before I hit this and mm. the rest of it is in the book I'm about to wrap this part up deja vu there is a future you right now that exists in God there's a future me that exists just like the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth before it happened just like John saw people that was in heaven before they were there, there's a future you. And I want you to grasp that before I say this next statement, because this next statement is going to be mind blowing. There is a future you biblically that's in heaven right now. There's a future you that's in the new Jerusalem. There's a future you that's in walking the streets of gold right now. There's a future you that has completed every work that God has given you. There's a future you that have received the crown of glory that God has assigned for you if you completed his work. There's a future you that already has walked with Jesus. There's a future you that has already hugged Jesus. Whoa, come on. But it hasn't happened yet. Because we're still in our time. And deja vu, and I'm expound off of this too. Deja vu is a memory from your future self translated into now. Think about that real quick. Deja vu is a memory from your future self translated into now. Because you're connected with your future self whether you believe it or not. You're connected with your future self. You and your future self are more connected than you can realize. And the very fact, what destiny is, what destiny is, is not so much what God, it is what God plans to do with you, but it's what's already been done in the future. And God's working his way back in history to catch you up to what you already did. This is why. When God gave me that prophetic word about the earth and he's merging it with destiny, this is why, because it is a supernatural merging that takes place supernaturally in the realm of time. This is why we're seeing so much acceleration in 2020 when this acceleration prophetic word started to be fulfilled. Because whenever a person or the earth meets their destiny, strange things start to happen. Supernatural things start to happen. Creation will yield confirmation. Creation let me give you a personal example. Let's say that God destined you to go to the nations. Whenever you are walking on the earth, you can live your normal life. But when God meets you, it's time to change. And whenever he calls you, everything starts to yield. For example, 
Mm. You may get a prophetic word saying you're called to the nations. It may not come to pass for the next 10 years, but when it starts to get close to coming to pass, everything that you look at in creation will look like it's starting to yield confirmation. I'll use myself for an example. I was working at a place in South Holland, Illinois. God said, your time is almost up. I'm like, okay. I went outside. I saw a car with the number seven on it. I'm like, that's interesting. I began to see buildings with the number seven. Hmm. I began to play my Madden game, my Madden game, my Madden game, and the name that popped up randomly was William Jackson in the Tyrone Jackson. I posted it to my Facebook. Those are my names. My name is William Tyrone Jackson II. Then there was another one that just happened to pop up that said Jesus Rose, which is interesting. That was the name on there. So literally, creation will start to yield itself as confirmation when you get close to your destiny, because what happens is the spirit and the power of God starts merging upon you and then the supernatural starts bursting forth to make room for who you are to be in the earth. This is why when Jesus came, when Jesus came, a star had to yield itself as confirmation. This is why in time prophecy, different things are yielding to his return. When it is time for you to walk in destiny, creation will align for you. Nobody um, else will see you uh, notice it, but you'll notice it. And that's because God is the future you with the past and present you to form you going on that route. And here's a little nugget. I wasn't even planning on saying this. It's a little nugget. And I want you guys just to think on this a little bit. Have you ever been alone in your room and you felt the presence of somebody? Sometimes you might get the urge to rebuke it, thinking it's a demon. But there are other times when you may think that it's just simply God. What would you do if I told you, and I'm going to give you scripture in a second. What would you do if I told you that the person that you were feeling, not every single time, but sometimes may have been an Old Testament prophet or prophet in general? Why do I say this? Or how can I say this from scripture? When you look in the Bible, God picked Ezekiel up by his locks and brought him to the temple in the spirit. God picked Ezekiel up by his locks and brought him to the temple in the spirit. He was observing what was going on. Ezekiel was present in the spirit there, not in his physical body, but by the spirit. Wow. So there's chances that whenever God decides to show somebody something, and when God showed the prophets of the Old Testament these days, right now, that when he transitioned them, oh, I got a word how I say this, because I don't want you to miss it. I'm going to say it twice so you don't miss it. There's a potential possibility that if you feel somebody looking at you, God has taken an Old Testament prophet and showed them the future. But here's the key. He took them in their timeline, but they're dead in our timeline. So you're not feeling their spirit presently, their present spirit, which is in heaven, but their timeline being in the past and they're being shown you right now. I'm just giving an example. Is their past spirit being shown what's going on in the earth? But because it's in our timeline, we can feel it, but he's dead in the right now. But he's, uh, if you've ever seen a time travel movie, you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> I break that down in the book too. But literally, mm. literally, God can take a prophet and prophetic people, travel them in the spirit, time travel you into the future to see a people that's not born yet. Powerful. And you can be there next to them and they not even know it. They not even know it. You can stand next to your future grandchild in the spirit. And they not even know it. And you can, don't even get me started on this. There may be times God will transfer you into the future. I'm giving an example that for you to speak over a future grandchild and decree things over your future grandchild. And you're there in the spirit. And people will think that it's your, people will try to say that it's a ghost and stuff. But in reality, it's the past you that was transferred into the future to decree something by the spirit of God. And he takes you back. Bro. Because once you're dead, you can't, you know, walk around as a ghost and stuff. So that's just a little stuff to think about with deja vu time travel. I break it down more in the book extensively, scientifically, 
a ton going over the book of Daniel revelation, as well as, uh, Kennedy, Lincoln, uh, as presidents, it's so much interesting stuff. Yes, bro. That's powerful, man. Oh my God. Oh my God. Praise uh, God. Bro. So <laughs> this is man. Crazy. Oh man. Somebody said, I got to watch this again. I agree Glory with you. To God. I need to talk about it again too, bro. That is, uh, so here's, what's crazy, right? Because yes, I think about a couple of months ago, God began to speak to me about time travel. Okay. Yes. And I was like, I don't know about that. That's kind of like a goofy subject, right? Like, uh huh. <laughs> because a lot of a lot of people, you know, they say it's sci-fi, et cetera. Yeah. But it, then the Lord began to speak to me about Moses. <laughs> and he said, how do you think Moses got the book of Genesis? And I said, huh? <laughs> because for those of you who don't know, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. And Genesis yes. was centuries before he was born. Yes. And so when Genesis was in the, uh, when, when Moses was in the cloud, she cut up. Come on. He had an encounter or had a revelation or had an experience where he time traveled to see everywhere that God was before he was born. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he saw creation. He saw man. Yes. He saw Adam and Eve. He saw the fall. He saw uh, the flood. With He saw Enoch. Moses yes. knew Enoch. He saw him. Now, he didn't record yes. much about his life, unfortunately. That would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. But then, then, you know, he saw the flood. He saw the Tower of Babel. He saw Abraham. He saw Isaac. He saw Jacob. He saw Joseph. He saw all this. He time traveled. To see everywhere that God was before he was even born. Yes. And so I was like, man, that's true, Lord. And so, bro, here's what's wild. On the same note that God's been talking to me about time travel, um, my wife had a dream. And I don't know if I shared this with you yet. Um, my wife had a dream where she woke up in the dream. Uh-huh. So she was sleeping. In the dream, she woke up. Very interesting. Yes. And then she saw and then uh the camera view went underneath the door and she saw this giant angel just step right in front of our bedroom door. And uh then she said, "Lord, send more angels." And instead, the angel opened the door, took her, and she went back in time to the Garden of Eden. Yes. So my wife time traveled in the in this encounter and she went back to the garden and actually saw Adam and Eve in the garden. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love and, it. And bro, and so then uh then she said that uh then the angel took her up and then she looked beneath her feet and she saw the stars underneath her feet. Glory. So she was God. going up, right? Yes. And so then uh then she ended up uh, in, in, in the heavens, in the third heaven, uh, and she saw Jesus and the Father having a conversation. <laughs> and uh, she said that the Father looked like this silhouette of fire, right? The Bible says the Lord our God is a consuming fire. Yes, uh, yes, and then she saw yes. Jesus. He had a physical body and th that was glowing in glory. But yes. anyways, bro, so this is so cool because God's been talking to me about time travel, and then God led me to connect with you and then you know just this revelation on time travel there's something there bro the fact that you said that many cool. times deja vu is a future memory yes. Colli like colliding with the present reality like like you yes. your future you was already there and you yes. went and you just stepped into the future you that's powerful yes man. like haven't i done this before have i done this before i've been that's because you have Yes. yes. Oh, and man, that's bro. an awesome testimony, man, that you gave of your wife's dream, man. Absolutely, man. Man, that's so good. So, 
Ah, bro, I don't even know where to go from here. That was too good. <laughs> bro, yeah. I, man, like just for you guys watching, listen, there's so much we could talk about the prophetic. Um, like I said, I didn't want to just step in the shallow waters. I wanted to go into some deep stuff. So here's what we're going to do, bro, because I know I want to honor your time. Uh, I'm going to just rapid fire some questions for you. Cool, cool. Uh, that some people had. Uh, number one. How can you, just on the basics, how can you discern God's voice from the devil's voice? How you can, can you discern God's voice from the devil? Um, the very basic way that I'll give it, it goes deeper into this. And I'm writing a new book on just totally understanding his voice because it's a lot of stuff. But the very basic that I can give is study scripture, know the Bible inside and out, because ultimately God's, God's voice sounds like the scriptures. And when God speaks, this is with any spirit being when they speak, what they speak don't get caught, so caught up on hearing with your physical ears because there's a lot more to the voice of God or, you know, just voice in general in the spirit realm than just hearing with your ears. Voice carries um, energy. And whenever God speaks to you, God, the, the voice of God is commanding. And the voice of the enemy can be that way too. But I'm going to tell you how to discern the difference. When God tells you to run, your body is going to naturally react to it run when he tells you to jump your body will naturally jump that's why when jesus spoke to lazarus and said rise his body naturally reacted and rose <laughs> because when god speaks or any spirit spirit being the words are energy jesus said that his word is active like a two-edged sword and the greek word that is used there is a word that's in link with the term energy because when he speaks it energizes that part so when the enemy does it also notice this in the bible it speaks of the fiery darts of the enemy. It's not just a normal dart. When the um, fiery dart is tossed into your mind, you'll notice that it starts to web up and, uh, and fire up with these thoughts that's against God. Yes, it has frequency. It starts to go with these thoughts against God. So it brings me back to my original point. When you know the Bible inside and out, study the word of God, worship, live a lifestyle of worship, fasting and prayer. When you do these things, whenever the enemy speaks to you and whenever God speaks to you, you'll automatically just about know the difference. Of course, you're in the flesh. You're going to have times when it's harder to discern between the two because Satan can sound a lot like God to the untrained ear and even to the trained ear, which is why you have to consistently, uh, you know, test the spirits, you know, and stuff. But you'll be able to tell. It's not going to be something that you'll be able to tell psychologically with your human mind, but it's going to be something that you're able to tell and hear. And this doesn't get a lot of your spirit being, not saying you don't do this, but your spirit being in general doesn't get a lot of credit. A lot of people try to understand with here when the understanding comes from here. Trying to understand with here, you'll never be able to fully discern what's God and the enemy. But whenever you uh, do it from here, it's like a light that clicks, literally, once you study his word. Can you hear me? Yeah, I muted myself, my bad. Oh, cool, you're good. <laughs> uh, next question, different kinds of prophets. You have different kinds of prophets. Um, I'm, I'm gonna pull my book out because I uh, have a large uh, list, but I'm only gonna do a few to answer the question. Cool. And uh, the chapter in here I have that goes off uh, after the office of a prophet. And give me one second. Sure. Okay, in uh, my book, uh, it, I talk about the different kind of prophets, actually, I don't know if you can see it, but I talk about it in this chapter. Um, okay. the different kinds of prophets, you have the weeping prophet, um, which let me say this first. It's not limited to these. There's no actual scriptural outline for this is the kind of prophet here. This is the kind of here. However, you will notice patterns in different prophets. So it's not limited to these. It could be more than this. But this is just a basic view. You have the weeping uh, prophet, which is an example of Jeremiah. These prophets typically weep a lot with the prophetic words they get. You have a more or less confrontational prophet. Should all prophets be confrontational? Yes. But you'll notice that there's a little up in the confrontation between a uh, Isaiah and between an Elijah. You'll notice the difference. Um, 
You have the priestly prophet, which is more like the church prophet in a sense, like Ezekiel. Ezekiel was the like he he was in link with the priestly uh, prophet uh, link. You have a militant prophet. These are the kind of prophets that'll seem like that they're obsessed with warfare. Joshua was an example of a prophet of war. Um, I talk about this in here. Then you have an apocalyptic prophet, which all prophets should kind of speak about the time of Jesus' return and all of that. But some that I would be under this category and stuff with the things that I prophesy, apocalyptic uh, prophet. Um, you know, these are the kind of prophets that you'll hear, hear consistently speak about the day of the Lord. Uh, you'll have a governmental prophet. Uh, they're involved heavy in the government. Financial prophets who hear the sight of God dealing with money, you know, uh, depending. And it's, you know, uh, those are just some basic overviews. And you can gel into one another. It's no specific set way, but you can hold these different ones, you know, different things. I'm um, I'll use myself as an example. Um, you know, I'm apocalyptic, but I, you know, I'm involved with government. I prophesied to Rahm Emanuel and, you know, others and stuff. But at the same time, I'm confrontational, very confrontational. So literally, uh, some of you, you know, you have, you know, brother here who's a revivalist, pure revivalist, you know, and you have different people in different categories. And I have scripture for it, but I don't remember it offhand. It may be in the book, but uh, that's just a quick and then, I'm sorry, you guys, for going on a little rabbit trail. That's my version of quick to answer the question. No, that's good, so I hope bro. That answers the question. No, that's that's good, man. Uh, so I guess even uh, somebody asked this last week: a Navi prophet, a seer prophet. Like, talk a little bit about how different people receive the prophetic. So there's seers. I'd say you're definitely a seer. <laughs> yes. uh, there's uh, hearers, knowers, those who prophesy out of proclamation. Uh, well, here I am answering the question. I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> okay. And I also, I note this in this book too, discussing the different kind, you know, with the nabi and all of that. A nabi, mm -hmm. and I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to read all of it. I note nabi, this is the very first Hebrew word that we see used in scripture as it relates to a prophet. This word is found 316 times in the Old Testament, and it is first used in Genesis 20, verse 7, when God makes a reference to Abraham being a prophet. I personally find it interesting that Abraham was used to re reveal to us the sacrifice of the father uh, to send his son through the attempted sacrifice of the only covenant son Isaac in Genesis 22. I love this picture because it's completely outlined in the famous scripture that is known as John 3.16. How prophetic is it that that wow. Nabi is mentioned 316 times. The first person it's mentioned with is Abraham, who's a prophetic picture of God sending his son in Genesis 22. In John 316, for God so loved the world that he sent his son. I thought that was interesting. But no, that is. <laughs> a Nabi can typically receive things as if like it's bubbling up. It's, you know, gives the expression of bubbling up. If you take like a Sprite and shaking it up, shook it up, it'll bubble over. It's almost like that, like the spirit of God just bubbles up inside of you. Then you have uh, chose. This is uh, one of the Hebrew words that describes a seer, um, which it means a beholder of a vision or a stargazer. Uh, I have some more in here, but I'm going to just talk about these two is a stargazer. And you'll notice, and I noticed this, and you'll notice that anytime, if you've ever been on one of my lives when I'm prophesying, I'll start looking like this. It's not because I just want to look like that. But when I look like that, my spirit starts zeroing in and focus, almost like you're looking at the stars or the telescope. It's God not telling you to go worship the stars. But it's like, you know, how you look through the telescope and you're looking, you're so concentrated on the stars and you're looking at it and, you know, things like that. When you do that and you do that and you're connected with the spirit of God and whenever he speaks to you, you'll notice a vision will start to form uh, within the, your eyelids. If your eyes are closed, they'll start to form in your mind's eye if your eyes are open. So the difference is, is a nabi typically receive words more audibly while a seer typically receives words more in seeing. Then you have those that can receive in both, just, you know, in both. So it could be a wide variety of ways, depends on the person. I see a lot, but I also receive a lot audibly. So I'm a combination of the two. But I, yeah. I think I see, I think I see a little more, a little, just an inch more so. So yeah, you don't confine yourself into one. For those of you learning, just be open to how the Lord, the Lord will use you. And just when you think that you have an established pattern, that's when God will switch it up. 
Yeah, that's good, man. I agree with you. The Lord always, sometimes there's different seasons and different ways he'll talk to you on purpose. Yes, yes. Yeah, somebody said, uh, what's the title of your book, brother? It's literally Understanding the Prophetic. Yep, Understanding the Prophetic on Amazon, and the link should be below. Yeah, the link should be below. It's also pinned on the live chat. It's pinned to the to the top, so you guys could click on it or click on the description. If you're on Facebook... um. Go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and buy his book. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate the support. Yeah. Um, okay. So we didn't we didn't get to this question yet, but I want to knock it out real quick. That's fine. How to identify a false prophet? How to identify a false prophet? I love this question. Um, I'm gonna. It's a long version, but I'm gonna give you give you a quick version. Sure. You can identify a false prophet by these things first and foremost. What do they have to say about Jesus? The revelation that they give, how does it present Jesus? Is it saying that Jesus is less than God? Is it saying that Jesus is not the son of God? Is it saying that Jesus is just a human? Or is it saying that Jesus is the son of God, God in the flesh and a human and God at the same time he died on the cross, resurrected? Does, it, does he glorify Christ? That's the first and foremost thing. Because in history, you have had a lot of accurate false prophets. I'm going to say that again. You have had a lot of accurate false prophets. Muhammad yep. accurately saw a false angel give him the revelation. He accurately saw certain things that the, because the demonic, the satanic realm knows things too, and they can reveal things to you. So accuracy is not the only thing that makes a prophet. It's how one draws you to God. Next thing I would say is accuracy, because though a prophet, as we talked about this earlier, can miss every once in a while, if somebody's just continuing to miss, then there's a good chance that they're not a prophet and stuff. Now, of course, if you miss every once in a while on interpretation because we're humans, but if you if if you have a career and a practice of missing, like every time you prophesy, it doesn't hit, it doesn't come to pass, it doesn't happen, or it happens like one or two times, you know, then chances are you're not a prophet, you know, because a broken clock is right uh, twice, you know, a day. So um, the two, um, I want to see what I want to put in there because it's so much. The third, how do they look at the Bible? Do they look at the Bible as the total authority of the word of God? Or do they just look at it as one of many books and they put their revelation on the same level of the 66 that's in the Bible? Look at when they do that. If they put it on the same level as the 66, again, back away from them because nobody, no, nobody's words is on the level, you know, with uh, the 66. Uh, literally no doctrine can be replaced by any prophetic words that we give. If you receive a prophetic word or hear a prophet prophesying something that's against scripture and i don't mean that's against just interpretation because interpretations can vary but i mean that's literally against scripture if a prophet come a prophet comes and says jesus didn't die on the cross you know they're false because the bible clearly says jesus died if a prophet says god didn't create the heavens and the earth huh? you know what then you know that's false because the bible said in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth if it's clear in the bible and a prophet prophesies against what's clear then you know it's not biblical but if a prophet says something that you just may not agree with with interpretation eh, you know that's a little sticky because even the apostle paul disagreed with the apostle peter because peter had some false doctrine going on but you never saw paul calling peter a false apostle so there's a lot of weight to it but those are the few things that i'll tell you to look for mm, that's good man that's good um Lord God, thank you. Next up is somebody asked, how do you know you have the gift of prophecy? Um, I guess you can marry this with the next question, which is how do you know you're called to the office of a prophet? Okay, I'll kill two birds with one stone. With this, first, um, I got to break down and I'm going to do it quickly for you guys. The gift of prophecy, um, the gift is something that you have. It's like a part-time job. Your life doesn't surround around it. The office of a prophet is a career. Your life surrounds around it. And you know you have to do everything in, in conjunction with that. How do you know if you have the gift of prophecy? Because you'll dream of stuff that's coming to, uh, that's gonna happen and it happens. You'll have visions of stuff that's going to happen and it happens. 
people get the gift of prophecy and the gift of word of wisdom, knowledge, and the gift of discerning of spirits mixed up. All those are prophetic, but the gift of prophecy is not that. The gift of the word of knowledge is telling of something present or in the past. The gift of the word of wisdom is giving prophetic instruction. Discerning of spirits is discerning, literally separating what spirit is which. Uh, the gift of prophecy is foretelling or forthtelling. Uh, the person with the gift of prophecy only typically does the gift of prophecy, but a prophet operates in all of those. So how can you tell if you have the gift of prophecy? Again, if you have dreams, visions that come to pass, how can you know if you're in the office of a prophet? If uh, God is calling you, God will make it clear to you if you were to go into the office, you're going to undergo uh, training. The training will be intense one way or another, um, and you will receive um, prophetic words, prophetic words of gift that's in the gift of prophecy, also the gift of discerning of spirits, the gift of the word of knowledge, and the gift of the word of wisdom. Every prophet in the Bible you see, they typically operated in all of those one way or another. Oh, I, I can't hear you, Gabriel. Sorry, I keep muted myself. You're good, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let me see here. What's another one? I think I think what we'll do, man, is I think we'll well, I guess uh I'll ask you this one last thing and then I'll I'll let you share whatever's on your heart. What do you Ooh. feel the Lord so concerning? I know you shared a little bit of this earlier, concerning what is the Lord saying right now for today? And then I'll I'll let you share whatever else uh the Lord puts on your heart to share as we close out. The Lord is saying, um, and man, we're going to have to do a part three, man, because what I want to share, um, man, I got to get to the kids. But if you don't mind, we could do a part three. And they, Sorry, they, you said they part, three. part three. <laughs> yeah, we could do a part three if you guys want to see it, because sure. what I'm going to share, um, I realize the stuff it's going to take up for a whole nother uh, podcast. And okay. because I, the Lord visited me yesterday in such a mighty manner, and I want to share that. But what the Lord is sharing with me right now is that Hero Namaski Shana Manterote, Roto Roma Bobhoka Te, Shekana Maski Hana Baridia. Is it's a common word and it's a known word, but he's sharing it because it's it's taking place. He's bringing his glory on a new realm to the earth. And he needs pure, a purified people to carry his glory um, to different places, revivalists, if you will. This is where you come in at, Nelson. <laughs> yeah, this Praise is God. because he's doing this. And I see him positioning them um, every which way. I even see, uh, I see him positioning them in Kentucky. There's a revival that's going to break out in Kentucky that's going to be so heavy. It's going to be a revival in Kentucky that's going to, you know, be so heavy. It's going to be so heavy. I see him positioning somebody very prominent in Kentucky, and he's establishing them like a pillar. And it's going to be, oh man, it's going to be a great move of God. I, I don't want to, it's it's going to be a revival, but it's not only going to be a revival. It's going to be bigger than a revival. It's going to, I'm just going to say a move of God. I see him establishing them, nailing them there like a move of God. I don't know what that means fully, but God is positioning people throughout the United States as such um, because of the America's going into some dark days and he needs the lamps of his spirit to, you know, be here to help guide people, you know, to the feet of his son. So that's what the spirit of God is speaking to me today. Amen, bro. Amen. Show. All right. So let me do this real quick. Brother, I want you to go ahead and just pray for the people. I believe what the Lord was showing me for tonight was there was I, I, I knew tonight was going to be powerful, bro. You shared some you dropped some bombs of revelation. Praise God, man. Praise and God. I just want to thank you for that. But Glory. I was sensing this, and I and I hope you, in your heart, you're in agreement with me. I felt like God was going to activate some people in the prophetic today. Paul said in Romans how he wanted to come to impart some spiritual gift to the church. Uh, Amen. Can, can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Oh, wait. Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> technical issues. Cool. I felt like somebody was, I felt like there was going to be an impartation that was going to be released tonight of the prophetic of the gift of prophecy and uh, just some the prophetic anointing and, and the way I like to describe impartation is this what one man sacrificed for what one man had to sow into you get to receive an impartation and this has been my heart man this is my heart in what we do in this channel this is my heart and what we i do in ministry is like man i waited eight years to start this uh i've i've suffered trial after trial suffered uh, many trials and i think i still will because the, yeah. the anointing is not cheap mm -mm, it's not it comes at a cost salvation yes. is a free gift but the anointing comes at a cost and to yes. enter and walk in and carry the realm of glory it comes with a sacrifice because this is what the scripture says it says we get to be partakers of the power of his resurrection yes. but also the fellowship of his sufferings yes and it and it is we many of us need to carry a crown of thorns before we get that crown of glory yes we're we're followers of jesus we, we also pick up a cross and deny ourselves daily and are crucified with him if we want to carry yes. the kind of glory that we carry. But this has been yes. my heart. I've always said, Lord, whatever I've had to suffer for, whatever I've had to count the cost for, to step into, Father, let my ceiling become the ground in which the people that I impart to get to walk on. Let yes. my cap become the starting place for the next generation let my let let where i reach my limit become the starting place for those who receive from whatever i'm i'm able to deliver and so tonight i'm gonna pray this and i'm gonna let you pray father i pray for every viewer tonight father we pray an impartation tonight yes. of what we've yes. had to suffer for of what we yes. had to count the cost for of also what we freely received father we freely give tonight god in an impartation if you want this tonight begin to reach your hand towards your screen and say i receive it father impart this glory on every viewer watching live and replay father in Heart, God, the gift of prophecy into them. Yes. Impart the prophetic realm into them. Impart, God, this extra level and dimension. Father, begin to activate them. Father, as you brought clarity to many things that were confusing, Lord, I pray that their soul would begin to align with their spirit and they begin to walk in the prophetic from this day forward, from this podcast forward, from Father, from this video forward. May they begin to receive dreams visions encounters revelation yes. may them may they may they be uh, begin to know how to get their revelation interpret and yes, apply lord. it father may they become a prophetic people a prophetic nation you said yes, lord, lord in the book of joel that in the last days uh, you will pour out your spirit on all flesh and their sons and daughters will prophesy your young yes. men see vision your old men dream dreams and you will show great signs in the sky and on the earth father begin to raise up in these last days this end time remnant father this last day remnant god that will begin to step into that prophetic mantle that has been passed down you said before the coming of the great before your coming, you will send forth Elijah. Father, impart yes, a spirit of Elijah on a generation, yes, Father. Impart a spirit of Elijah on a generation, Father. Reconciling the hearts of man back to the Father. Yes, Begin to release that prophetic mantle on them. And I even see the Lord saying this. There's some of you who your family is being called to the prophetic, but the devil has come in and brought in divination and has brought in yes. uh, all kinds of perversion 
because and I see somebody right now you've been dealing with uh, uh, death and witchcraft and sickness and division in your family it is the antichrist spirit coming to divide but I hear the Lord saying I'm about to send the spirit of Elijah to your family I'm about to send the spirit of Elijah to your family to reconcile hearts of the fathers back to the children and the children to the fathers I hear the Lord saying I'm about to unite households I hear the Lord saying I'm about to do that which I said this promise is to you and to your children and your children's children and you and your household shall be saved yes. father begin to release this over this generation begin to release this over every viewer father send revival to every house and revival to every yes, family God. yes Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody in here. Now, Father, I pray that those are listening. In Jesus' name, I reach my hand out and I release impartation into them. Father, that that I had to work for, that that which you had to teach me. Father, I pray that you manifest impartation into everybody that's watching this that would receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you ample up their dreams, their visions, their prophetic words. I pray if they're a prophet that you activate them in that. I pray if they have the gift of prophecy that you activate it in that. I pray, God, and I impart as you will it, the gift of prophecy into those that you have ordained in the name of Jesus. And I pray at the very least, God, that you would stir up the spirit of prophecy in each and every individual and believer on here in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would open them to brand new realms in the name of Jesus. And may the fire of God, God hit them and may the key unlock their ears to brand new revelation in the name of Jesus. Now, you guys that's on here. I'm going to have to find out a way we can put this together, uh, do actual prophetic uh, activations with you personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and, you know, we could put that together, but today was just an overview of it. Father, and I pray that you keep those that's watching this in safety, in Jesus' name. Come on, man. Come on. Brother Ty, thank you so much, man, for everything you just uh, brought to us tonight. Thank you hey, thank for everything, you man. Uh, bro, we want to honor you, man. Thank you guys for being a part of the after party. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry if she just blew somebody's ears out. Okay. I love you guys. Bless you guys. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Like the video. The replay is about to be available in a few. The replay will be available in a few minutes. I love you guys. Take care. <laughs> All right, here we go. See you guys.